Okay, good morning, Tuesday 22nd of May, hope you are well. Uh, just give you an overview, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the US close, kind of trade truce and how that lifted US equities yesterday. Uh, we'll have a look at the pound, uh, a little bit of an analyst call on, on Brexit and the outlook for the pound, which we'll briefly recap. We'll look at Italy and then we'll look at the calendar ahead with some focus on uh, Mark Carney appearing in front of the Treasury Select Committee later on this morning. Uh, then I'll hand you over to Sam. He'll talk you through the charts as per usual from a more technical perspective. But kicking things off then, quick broad look across the asset classes. You've just seen a little bit of dollar weakness over the course of the last 10 minutes or so, which has seen both major pairs here in the top left, Euro, Dollar and Cable, have some moderate upside. Now, importantly, there's not been one specific news headline that's driven this move. Uh, the Squawk was just covering the analysts there about some potential uh, EM short covering, so emerging market currencies. Uh, this has been something we have been seeing, uh, dollar sales in order to kind of prop up their local currencies in some of these emerging markets. I'd say that's a little bit tenuous, um, but the move already just abating here more recently, so I wouldn't probably read too much into it. Uh, but certainly a bit of a pull off the, the Asian kind of peak in the dollar uh, and we've also seen gold then just take a bit of a, a lift on the back of that move as well, but gold pretty flat overall. Um, DAX, obviously, centre-left chart here. We're back into trade. Obviously, it was a public holiday yesterday. The Deutsche Börse was closed. Although we had Bund trade, there was no DAX trade. So playing a bit of catch-up, hence the quite aggressive gap up at the open here uh, that you can see. However, we instantly closed that. Uh, we've already had a gap fill uh, in the futures already. Uh, interestingly, though, U.S. indices managed to hold on to that impressive move that we had, the reopening of trade from last night, or I should say Sunday night, uh, this following those comments from Treasury Select uh, or Treasury Secretary uh, Stephen Mnuchin, who called that trade truce with China, at least for the time being. Uh, that consequently led to this, uh, not only a, a real firm positive close on Wall Street uh, in the U.S. indices, but the S&P 500 industrials. Uh, one day percentage change uh, was pretty impressive, uh, well in excess of uh, 1%. And actually just looking at some of the breakdown here on the heat map, you can see in the bottom right corner, the industrial goods section, the most green. So seeing the most outperformance, and you can see here Boeing, uh, we're up nearly 4%. Now, if you remember your Dow Jones constituents, Boeing is the largest, accounts for approximately 10% of the index. Boeing obviously very sensitive to news on the trade side with China because I think it was November of 2017 when Trump and China were in talks about trade and that was when China had committed itself for I think it was something like 300 Boeing aircraft over an extended period which equated to something like $37 billion for the firm. Um, on its own. So obviously Boeing a lot to gain, a lot to lose from a breakdown or a positive turn as we've seen in relationships with China. So helping bolster the likes of the Dow certainly yesterday. So that was the kind of the US move. Uh, industrials outperformed then. Uh, Asia I guess is fairly quiet. There's not really a great deal of, of news information coming out of Asia. Really it's more dictated by the North American sentiment, I'd say, for the global uh, daily uh, gauge of market sentiment. Uh, and at the moment, I guess one thing to just keep an eye on is the dollar index is retesting down at around the lower bound of uh, late yesterday's session. And so just quite interested to see here, you've already had euro dollar uh, in the top left get its head above the high print that we had uh, late in the US session. Uh, retested overnight in the Asia Pack uh, session as well. And with cable, uh, I know Sam was looking at this this morning already, you had that uh, kind of recovery back to the resistance point and around this 34.55 in the futures. Uh, and that's been tested three times and the fourth try here, we've had a break, it came back pretty much to the level before seeing a bit of a further extension here now on the upside. Uh, I guess a target logically be looking around this area where we've already just seen uh, a bit of resistance coming in on this next little phase and, and a push higher. You can see here, if I start just broadening out this chart, I mean, I don't want to talk about the text too much because I know Sam will look at this 
but this last little push and extension you can see just hitting this first natural target of the previous support points back on the 15th and 18th respectively uh, after that kind of break and breach of that resistance uh, from yesterday's range trade high. A um, couple of things though to be aware of with the pound, let's have a quick look at that um, and just thought I'd touch upon this story uh, only because really this analyst who's made this comment Stephen Gallo, who's the head FX strategy of BMO Capital Markets. Steve was the first uh, guy that I actually worked with back in 2006. Uh, he's now gone on to uh, become the head FX strategy of one of the major uh, Canadian banks. So I've got a lot of time for Steve. I respect what he says. Uh, he really does know his stuff on the, the kind of macro strategist side of things, um, in the FX markets that is. And he's kind of bucking the trend a little bit and obviously we've had quite a concerted fall in recent weeks uh, in the pound we know this we've dropped from really a 144 handle we're about 10 points lower at a 34 handle at the moment but he's come out and he's talking about um, obviously we've had a pickup an intensification of this idea of a potential snap election happening in the autumn this was of course triggered this idea by a report in the Sunday Times at the weekend but he's generally saying that he's unfazed by the risk of a UK election um, and saying that Theresa May's party preparing for a second national vote in just over a year and uh, saying the potential for more political drama at the same time of Brexit negotiations we've obviously seen the pound edge lower uh, but he's just basically saying that uh, it would leave the pound open to rage trading and flatness, but I don't think it's a big negative factor. Um, other strategists haven't been so sure, um, but I think if you put into context of where we were when we had the previous snap election and the uh, consequently the hung parliament that followed, I mean, this was when we had one of the biggest rallies in the pound at the time when she called the initial snap election. Obviously, we know what happened in that period thereafter. However, obviously, even with a hung parliament, you know, the pound rallied from really a 126 all the way up to a 144 handle. Uh, granted, there were other things going on here, like higher inflation and so on and so forth, which contributed to hawkishness from the Bank of England. But he's actually, his call is looking for a move back to 144. Uh, and if you read the weekly strategy that we put out yesterday, um, I'd say my view is similar but different to, to Steve's in the fact that I actually think that the political negatives, if we were to get a vote of no confidence, if we were to have another referendum or another snap election, I think there is room to go lower again. But I think then medium term, ultimately, we go back higher. Um, so I would say looking then, let's have a look at a, a cable chart and a bit of a longer time frame. I've got one marked up from discussions that we've had on previous times. and Let's have a look at that. This is, if I move that up, should be able to see all the annotations here. I'll move it over so you can see the e-referendum, obviously, going all the way back to the summer 2016, but really just having a look where we are at the moment. And there was that really nice trend line and, and resistance and support line that got broke. That was around that 137 handle. That was really key, I think, technically. The breach of that has seen a steady move lower uh, in the accompanying few weeks. Now, it seems like the political... Um, the political side of things is heating up and I think it does have the propensity to turn negative in terms of the pound and so in terms of downside levels I think the next or well, the low point that I think gets really interesting if we continue to remain under pressure I think if we start getting down to around this one more like a 130 handle which really is the resistance of the, the 2017 kind of Q2 area also that summer before the breach but has acted as support as well in the back end uh, you can see in Q3 and Q4 of 2017 I think that's really a critical area and really looking more I think over the coming months I don't think it'd be a surprise to see a gradual decline down to those levels but I think that's going to be a pretty firm barrier on the downside and actually even if we had uh, this is where I do agree with Steve I think even if we did have a quite a change and a snap election and so on and so forth I think the end result is the same political complication and around the length of Brexit which I think is going to be stretched out 
and the goalposts moved again and again and again in terms of the timeline, which just means we get inevitably still in the customs union and more of a softer Brexit. And therefore, as the economy starts to uh, get a bit of a breathing room as inflation dissipates, then we'll move back higher again long term for cable is kind of my, my more longer term assessment of how things will probably play out. Uh, but in the near term, what I'm saying is this political situation certainly does warrant monitoring quite closely. And as you'll know from a calendar perspective, um, the European side of Brexit discussions gets underway in Brussels again later on today. So do be mindful of any updates from the European side as we go through the session. The other thing, of course, to look out for today, if I just quickly flip over to the calendar for a second, you have this happening. So this kicks off, I mean, they've got here at 9.15. I'll double check that time. That's quite early for usually the Treasury Select Committee hearing. Um, but what this is, is we had the Bank of England interest rate decision more recently. And of course, that was accompanied by the quarterly inflation report. Now, what normally this is, is the governor and his fellow MPC colleagues just do a testimony and a Q&A session with members of parliament or I should say the Treasury Select Committee. Now, normally this is a repetition of what's been said in the press conference from the last BOE decision, but I would say for pound traders, it is worth definitely monitoring just in case Carney or his colleagues feel a need to add any more clarity to their current assessment about economic conditions or the forward-looking outlook. Usually though, very little new is said, so such close proximity to the actual rate decision itself. So that is coming up later on this morning and does need to be uh, paid attention to. Okay, the other story I just wanted to talk about, then I'll hand you over to Sam. And a lot of people are looking at this. Uh, and, and one of the things I was writing in the, the strategy report yesterday was about, is there a degree of Italian complacency in the market? We've seen Italian assets certainly moving. Uh, Two-year, 10-year yields you know, surging to the upside. You can see this in this graphic here about the last month, how far we've moved from around a 1.7 to a 2.4% in the Italian 10-year yield. FTSE MIB has been under pressure as well, but how or what needs to happen for this to spill over and start um, denting overall market sentiment for the broader asset classes? Uh, and a couple things just to be aware of here. So the question mark is, who is this chap in the picture? So this is Giuseppe Conti, who's the Prime Minister designate. And he's a lawyer and university professor who has basically a very uh, scant political background. He's not really a, a politician. A lot of people have been talking him as a, just another Italian technocrat, which they've been all too often falling into that, uh, that kind of uh, arena. I remember, uh, I think it was Mario Conti, if I remember, or well, not Mario what was his name? There was a guy a few years ago when they've had the same, I'm sure someone in the chat will remember uh, a few years ago. So it's not new in Italian politics, but it has raised a few questions. So Mr. Conti's lack of political experience and weak links to both Five Star and the League uh, has brought about some questions. And so where this has led to is that Mr. Mattarella, who's the president obviously in Italy, uh, has not immediately handed the mandate to Mr. Conti. So what needs to happen here is the two political parties, the Five Star uh, and the League, have been obviously in a lot of conversations and concessions and deal-making in order to get a cohesive government running. They then present to the president what they feel should be the prime minister to kind of represent uh, this party. And then with this, the president needs to accept it or can actually have the power to decline it and then they need to continue to to go into dialogue uh, thank you fabio mario monti of course was the was the chap i was referring to um, so what's happening here is that the italian president has summoned the two speakers of parliament so i.e the two heads de maio and salvini uh, to the president's palace today for further talks which suggests, according to some, he may harbour some doubts about the selection of Mr. Conti. Now, they were in talks yesterday. 
there are some talk going around that he could, the president, make a decision as soon as today. And from a trading point of view, a couple of people have been listening to on Bloomberg TV, the kind of talking head pundits, have been saying if the president accepts Conti as the prime minister, this could then lead to further movement higher in Italian yields, so selling of BTPs and further pressure into uh, the FTSE MIB, the local Italian stock market, and could weigh on the euro currency. The opposite, if it gets rejected, it might be met with some relief and euro uh, strength in that respect. Um, to give you an idea, though, on some of the other political background, uh, Di Maio is expected to be part of the government as Minister of Labour and Economic Development, allowing him to oversee the disbursement of this €780 Euro per person basic income. This is part of the Five Stars kind of signature policy. And Mr Salvini is set to become the Interior Minister. This obviously then gives him some control on being able to oversee the issue of immigration. Um, so just keep an eye out for this later today. There is no set time, but one would imagine probably in the afternoon is when you want to be listening out for it. And if Conti gets confirmed by the president, the, the belief here from what I've been listening to this morning and what I've been reading is that this could lead to a negative initial reaction in European asset classes uh, if Conti is approved. So something to just be aware of outside of the, the just a regular calendar of events. All right. Quick look at the calendar itself. It is particularly quiet from an economic data point of view. You've got public finance data coming out of the UK. Um, later on, you've got the Bundesbank's monthly report. So worth keeping an eye on the kind of traditional measurements of their growth prospects and inflation outlook from the German Bundesbank. Uh, and then later on in the afternoon, equally quite quiet on the data front, um, we've got Richmond Fed and then the API crude oil infantry is much later on in the evening. As I said, though, a couple of speaker events, the, the Bank of England, uh, according to the calendar here, due to kick off shortly. Uh, and then ECB's Leakin and speaking later on late morning as well. So, uh, again, aside from this, keep an ear out on the Italian situation. Keep an ear out for anything out of Brussels for their latest take on the Brexit negotiations. Uh, as well that needs to be monitored. Okay guys, I'll hand you over to Sam and I wish you a good day. See you in the chat room. Hi guys, good morning. Just have a quick look at Euro to start as you can see. I'll just bring that into picture here. <coughs> just coming to the higher point of the of the day with the dollar index at its low. Same for the cable, really. We'll just have a look at that in a minute. Always tricky, I think, when you've had a, a quite clear trend in the market for a number of weeks when you start to see um, a bit of a reversal. So I wouldn't be too eager to sort of jump into a, uh, any trades, whether that be the long or the short, uh, rather than you know, just letting the market tell you uh, what's going on. Here, we're obviously getting this move quite, quite uh, Quite a strong one above what was the previous high of the day. R1 would ne be the next sort of level of interest before we get to Friday's high, which is pretty much on, on R1 anyway. Um, so uh, just be a bit careful. I think obviously the overall trend, if we make this you know, quite a, a longer you know, chart, even just what we can see here, which is the back end of, uh, of March, it's been coming down quite, uh, quite nicely albeit with a few pullbacks here and there just to continue the overall trend. So by no means am I saying this is the, the end of the, uh, of the downward trend that we've had in Euro, um, Euro dollar. But I'll just be careful. Obviously R1 and this high looks you know, technically quite nice for an area to, to take profit for those that have been in uh, the long above the, well, the, the highs of the day, maybe a bit of a break of that trend as well. Let's get one on going here. You can see using the high from yesterday morning into the evening marks up quite nicely as well with the R1. So a good profit profit target for anyone that is, is long or, or perhaps looking to, to get that short and to get the continuation of the trend. P cable pushed above the, the highs of yesterday, the um, level that I put in the, the chat earlier. Um, Decent resistance point it came into using previous lows of, of the day of here, the 10th, 15th, 
16th and then Friday as well and even a bit of support we had yesterday morning so strong resistance area I think if we were to get through that again I like I like our one for for the short but a strong level um, quite a bit of resistance around there so you know rightly so you'd, you'd have a bit of profit taking there and it did fail to push on uh, to the downside if, if you know you were already short obviously the, the previous sort of highs that we had yesterday morning afternoon and then this morning you can see where the classics already were. I think 134.56 on the futures would be a good place to, to take some of that trade off. Aussie dollar, which yesterday, as you see, or you're about to see, I should say, had a, a decent push to the upside, really sort of confirming um, a bit of a reversal here. Where could we get to? Let me just put this on a, perhaps the 240s. We're coming up to some interesting levels of resistance. Obviously, above where we're trading now, our one is, is not too far away. Uh, but quite key resistance points from the 24th, 23rd, that would be on a, a push above. You can see if we were maybe a bit longer term, over the next couple of days or weeks perhaps, you can see the previous lows here on the on the 27th of March. And let's bring that into picture now. Today's R2, you'd expect some strong, strong resistance around there. That really would be the pullback from what was some strong support earlier this year. Uh, before breaking through so one to keep an eye on there potentially uh, for Aussie dollar later in the day or week continuation of this dollar weakness of course would help push that through to the downside some strong uh, resistance broken last night that we had on the 11th spend a bit of time around there before pushing on I haven't really come back to test that point so again another area along with the low of the day that you'd be interested in uh, and then I guess you could have the higher the 17th just a bit below that so perhaps favoring a bit of the dollar weakness or a continuation of this overall trend from from higher up from these uh for these dollar pairs but uh it'd be a day where perhaps having a uh, bias is not necessarily the uh, the right way to to go about it dolly yen we'll have a quick look at as well which is just coming back to towards the pivot um worth having a trend let me just get the trend line up using these lows bit of a, a breakthrough so not the best trend to have on perhaps I think again same with the, the dollar pairs in terms of the having uh, sorry having the bias probably not the best way to go about it S1 technically looks quite good as an area to continue the overall trend I think that would be probably the, the trade that I'd be looking to, to get involved in uh, unless the, the dollar was to weaken really significantly and then I do like the look of this key level of uh, what would be now be support that we had on the 15th that I've got marked up on my own charts that would be the ideal trade to perhaps look to get into whether I think that comes in today or not I wouldn't be, wouldn't be too sure uh, DAX obviously back today gapped higher and sort of playing catch up but filled that very quickly and and is now um, just sort of signing around that pivot point. Obviously being on a, a similar to FTSE and being on a pretty good upwards uh, journey. Bit of a, a choppy market as we know, but around this one, which was also previous highs of, the, of other sessions, I think could be an interesting area to, to bear in mind. Obviously got the low of yesterday, S1, I think would be the next sort of level I'd be looking at to potentially uh, get in for a long. Uh, although yesterday, equities in the US were, were quite choppy as well you can see obviously gap higher still hasn't filled that gap so that's something just to bear in mind if we were potentially later in cash open breaking S1 and yesterday's low you could get a, you know an acceleration of that move uh, but yeah yesterday was was quite choppy as equities have been really for a while you know no overall um, uh, direction f throughout the week whether it finishes higher or lower is a different case uh, key level to the upside, obviously yesterday's high R1 and then the highs that we had back on the the, uh, the 14th as well. So maybe a push above there if, uh, would be in would interest you if you were looking to go long. Uh, and a break below S1 would interest you if you're looking to go short. Anything in between, obviously there's going to be you know little bits of support and resistance here and there. Uh, but the safer, safer trade might well be a push above the R1 or below the S1. 
uh, once volume really sort of looks to come in. We are obviously, as you can see here at the higher point of the day, a bit of resistance found uh, last night. For the NASDAQ you have um, yesterday evening's high that we had at 6 o'clock, not too far away as that's also just on the, the high of the day as well. Obviously with this pound weakness the FTSE has continued to, to push on and again as you see here, let me just put this on a, a weekly chart and move the pivots, new all time high again this morning or well, actually literally right now as well so we've really sort of continued to, to push on and uh, it seems that that may well continue um, so I'll be keeping an eye on, on obviously US equities and, and the DAX this morning for perhaps an overall direction but uh, nothing's stopping the FTSE for now it seems. Oil, and I'll just start with, with Brent before coming over to crude. You can see, if I just put this on a 60 minute without the pivots on, you can see a nice rejection that was found of the, the $80. We, you know, closing below that. But since then, we've, we've come back and uh, looked to push a bit higher again. Found good resistance on what was the, the high of the 18th this morning. Uh, but with oil, and we'll have a look at crude in a minute. It's, uh, seems to be that favouring the upside is the way to go and you can again, there you go, oil, uh, you know, crude oil just pushing to a new high for a while and if we look at that on a, a longer chart you can see obviously we're going back to levels now from 2014. I've got a trend line uh, that was sent out by Anthony uh, yesterday just to bear in mind from the all-time high down to this high that we had on the 14th, not too far away but uh, yeah, that might be something that we, we're looking at a bit later on here as well. So it's got a bit of free room to, to run perhaps the next technical uh, level from 2014, which you can see here on the 3rd of November. So I'd still favour a bit more of the upside, I'd say, for oil, but worth keeping an eye on, uh, on Brent as well if we can get another test of that high. Gold, just to, to wrap up, you can see with the dollar weakness just coming to its higher point of the day, the actual higher level is quite uh, key with yesterday, well not say yesterday's, Monday's uh, highs as well. R1 and those highs I think would offer quite decent resistance and a break. If you were to sorry, have a break above that then suddenly you, you know, you're looking at the 1300 handle uh, again. So the market's set up quite nicely with this dollar weakness uh, but I would just be careful when you do get a change of trend or a potential change of trend that can be when it's uh, sometimes the hardest conditions uh, to trade. Any questions as usual uh, please pop them in the chat but if not I'll, uh, I'll catch you later on. Have a good day.